Hello guys, welcome to my time. So in this video, we are going to look at the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. All right, let's get started. The anterior abdominal wall consists of five pairs of muscles, five on either side of the midline. The first thing is the three large flat muscles, which are external oblique, internal oblique and transversus abdominis. And then we have two vertical muscles, which are the rectus abdominis and the pyramidalis muscle. The three flat muscles are fleshy posterior laterally on the posterior side they are fleshy and on the anterior side they turn into aponeurotic so we are going to discuss each muscle one by one firstly we will discuss the external oblique muscle so the external oblique originates from the eight fleshy slips from the outer surface of the lower eight ribs. We have our abdomen here and then we have eight ribs right like this which will attach to the sternum like that. The eight fleshy slips, slips of the eight coastal ribs, lower eight. 8 lower ribs. It originates from the 8 fleshy slips of the lower 8 coastal ribs and it is inserted into 3 main fibers. Then one is the posterior most fibers which pass vertically downward to be inserted on the outer lip of the anterior two third of iliac crest. We have a iliac crest here. We will see how it inserts. So the fibers come like this, this is the median like this. So the posterior most fibers, these fibers, they are inserted into the outer lip of anterior two third of iliac crest. This is the iliac crest, outer lip of the anterior two third of iliac crest where posterior most fibers will insert and the remaining fibers will pass downward and forward to be inserted in a broad aponeurosis into the linea alba. So this is the linea alba. So all of the remaining fibers will make into a broad aponeurosis and insert into the linea alba. And what is the nerve supplying the rectus, uh, sorry external oblique? The anterior primary rami of the lower six thoracic spinal nerves. Nerve supply, I am telling. Supplied by the T7 to T12 spinal nerves, anterior primary rami. This is the nerve, this is about the external oblique. Going to internal oblique muscle. So I am drawing the abdomen. Lateral part. This is the iliac crest of the hip joint. These are the ribs. This is the sternum. This is the linea alba. This is the lateral lateral view of the abdomen. So coming to the internal oblique muscle. This muscle is relatively smaller and thinner than the external oblique and it lies to deep to the external oblique and its fibers are oriented at right angles to those of the external oblique. So it origins from the lateral two third of upper surface of inguinal ligament. We have the inguinal ligament right to the pubic tubercle like this. So lateral two third of the upper surface of inguinal ligament. The fibers will originate like this. The second origin is the anterior two third of iliac crest. This is the second origin. And the third from the thoracolumbar fascia. We have thoracolumbar fascia on the back. They originate like this. Thoracolumbar fascia, anterior two third of iliac crest and the uh, lateral two third of the inguinal ligament. And where are those inserted? They are inserted into the 7th, 8th and 9th coastal cartilages. 7th, 8th and 9th coastal cartilages like this. And posterior most fibers are inserted into the lower third and fourth ribs posterior most lower third and fourth ribs and the remaining are inserted into the linea alba like this thoracolumbar fascia outer lip of iliac crest lateral two third of the inguinal ligament inserted into the 7th 8th 9th coastal cartilages 
this is all you have to remember and uh, the nerve supply it is also supplied from the t7 to t12 spinal nerves the primary rami of lower six thoracic nerves and it is also supplied by the l1 which is nothing but as the ilio hypogastric and the ilio inguinal nerve this is about the nerve supply of the internal oblique oblique now we are going to discuss about the transversus abdominis muscle so coming to transversus abdominis muscle going to draw the lateral side of the abdomen these are the lower ribs which will travel like this it's the inferior end of the sternum it's gaffer forces linea alba outer lip of the iliac crest with the inguinal ligament and the pubic tubercle so coming to transversus abdominis muscle so coming to the origin of the transversus abdominis muscle it is originating from the lateral one third of out upper surface of inguinal ligament from here lateral one third and then entry two third of iliac crest the same and then the thoracolumbar fascia is the fourth origin and third origin and the fourth one is the inner surface of lower six ribs lower six ribs is there now their inner surface four origins lateral one third of inguinal ligament outer lip of the iliac crest thoracolumbar fascia and the inner surface of the lower six ribs this is the origin of the transversus abdominis muscle and where are they inserting their insertion is the inguinal fibers which arc backward and are inserted into the pubic crest like this they turn back and be inserted in the pubic crest and the rest all the fibers will come and transfuse with the transversus fuse with the linea alba like this so this is about the transversus abdominis muscle coming to its nerve supply it is also supplied by the t7 to t12 anterior primary rami and also by the l1 ilio hypogastric and the ilio hypogastric and the ilio inguinal nerve so these are the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall now i am coming to structures divided from the flat muscles so these are the three muscles that i have discussed right so i am going to discuss about the structures formed by them which are nothing but as the conjoint tendon and the cremaster muscle coming to structures derived from the flat muscles first one is the conjoint tendon and the second one is the cremaster muscle so these are all the structures derived from the flat muscle coming to the conjoint tendon it is also called as the falx inguinalis it is formed by the fusion of lower aponeurotic fibers of the internal oblique and transverse abdominis the lower aponeurosis of the internal oblique plus transverse abdominis muscle so these lower fibers aponeurotic fibers will form the conjoint tendon what are the important features of the conjoint tendon it forms the medial half of the posterior wall of inguinal canal posterior wall of inguinal canal and medially it blends with the anterior wall of rectus sheath so it forms the anterior wall of rectus sheath third thing is that laterally it may extend occasionally up to the interfoveolar ligament we have a interfoveolar ligament and it may extend up to it to form a thickening fascia transversalis fascia transversalis so these are the three things 
that are formed by the conjoint tendon. It is also called as the false inguinalis, formed by the lower aponeuritic fibers of the internal oblique and transverse abdominis, forms the posterior wall of inguinal canal, anterior wall of the rectus sheath, and continues to the interfovular ligament as the facial transversalis. Coming to the cremaster muscle. The cremaster muscle is, it consists of series of loops of skeletal muscle fibers. Loops of skeletal muscle fibers. Loops of skeletal muscle fibers. And the loops of cremaster muscle and fascia form the covering around the spermatic cord. Covering around the spermatic cord. And the medial ends of loops are attached to the pubic tubercle and the pubic crest. It is supplied by the sympathetic fibers from L1 and L2 segments. L1 and L2 segments, spinalers will supply the cremaster muscle. So this is about the cremaster muscle and the conjoint tendon, which are nothing but as the structures derived from the flat muscles. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe and watch our other anytime videos about the stomach and spleen. Thank you so much.